there's only really two root causes of Hashimoto's. And I'm going to explain what those are in this short video today. And I'm also going to explain why it's really important for you to work with someone that knows how to figure out which one you have, because it has a lot to do with treatment and outcomes and if you're going to feel good or not. So if you have Hashimoto's and you still don't feel good, even though you're taking medication, your TSH looks good, this video I think is going to help you. So root causes, that sounds really great, right? Like if we can find the root cause of Hashimoto's, then we can fix it. Well, as I've explained before, and you guys probably know this, just because you have Hashimoto's, your Hashimoto's is unique to you, right? Uh, I like to do this testing called lymphocyte immunophenotyping, and it's kind of like getting your immune system uh, fingerprinted. And that's really more for treatment, right? Now, what I'm going to talk about is going even deeper than that, right? So root causes, meaning like what went wrong that could have caused this Hashimoto's? Well, just remember, you know, Hashimoto's is the number one cause of hypothyroidism. About 9 out of 10 people that have hypothyroidism actually have Hashimoto's. Most of them never get checked for it. The average length of time it takes someone to get diagnosed with Hashimoto's is about 7 to 10 years. And even then, uh, the endocrinologist usually doesn't do anything different. They just give you the Synthroid or the Levothyroxine, and that's fine if that turns your life around. But for a lot of people, the people that make it to me, that's not what happens. Their TSH is good after they take the medication, their T4 is good, but they still feel bad, okay? So trying to get to the root cause, that sounds great. Well, there's really only two root causes if you think about it. The first is what I call genetics, right? There's two kinds of Hashimoto's, right? Genetic Hashimoto's. And that means in your family, other people have Hashimoto's, right? So you get diagnosed hypothyroidism, uh, you might get diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Well, how do you know if it's due to the genes? Well, there are genes that definitely predispose people to get different autoimmune conditions. We call those different genotypes, right? But if people in your family, your mom, your sister, your aunt, your grandmother, if they all have Hashimoto's, well, you probably do too. And it's most likely genetic, right? Because it kind of runs in families. Now, there could be just different autoimmune conditions in the family. It doesn't have to be Hashimoto's. But if there's autoimmune stuff in your family and you have hypothyroidism, and you don't know it's Hashimoto's, well, it's probably Hashimoto's. And that's really important to know. Why? Well, it's important to know because with the genes kind of driving everything, you can't turn those off, right? You can do a lot to regulate uh, and modify, you know, and slow things down. And people can feel great. I've been doing that for 20 years. But you can't cure Hashimoto's that way, right? There's genes that are turned on, and you're not going to turn them off. And that means for treatment, the odds of you, for example, getting off Synthroid or getting off Levothyroxine honestly aren't that great. The odds that you're going to be able to not need some kind of ongoing support of some kind are not uh, great. doesn't mean you're going to feel bad, but you need to know that you're looking at more lifetime changes, okay? That's for I've got genetic Hashimoto's, the root cause is my genes, right? Now, over here, this other kind, this other root cause is for acquired Hashimoto's. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, acquired Hashimoto's means it's not your DNA and the genes and hereditary that's driving this. What happens in this camp of Hashimoto's is usually the following. You've had some sort of infection. It could be an H. pylori. It could be Coxsackie virus. It could be a bunch of different things. We're not, we're not going to worry about the bugs. But you had an infection, and in the course of the infection, your immune system made antibodies, right, to get rid of the infection, to tag it. But these antibodies can also stick to your thyroid gland. We call that cross-reaction. I have some other videos that kind of explain that. And in cross-reaction, your immune system is trying to get rid of the infection, but these antibodies also stick to your thyroid gland, right? And that causes Hashimoto's, but it's just not genetic Hashimoto's, right? It's a cross-reaction acquired type of Hashimoto's. Now, the important thing to know is with treatment, and why does this matter, is because it doesn't mean you still have the infection, right? So don't let anybody tell you, oh, if you have Hashimoto's, you probably have a blank infection. That's almost certainly not true that, that it's still causing the Hashimoto's. You had somewhere in the past something that triggered it, right? I would tell you that the people that see me, the vast majority of them, don't have the acquired. They typically have the genetic kind. But you can still have the acquired kind. Why does it matter? Well, in this camp over here, the acquired kind, there's a much better chance that you're going to be able to not have to make 100% lifetime changes according to your lifestyle and your diet. You may have a better chance of getting off the thyroid medication you're taking. It's not guaranteed because you don't have the genes driving it. So it's really important, I think, to understand which of these two do, do you have. And I hope 
you are working with someone that knows how to tell the difference because you need to be able to, from, from a doctor standpoint, a practitioner standpoint, you need to know which is which so that you can best make suggestions, right? So we can be realistic about prognosis and know what tests to do, what tests not to do, right? And to be able to communicate to someone, hey, here's the chances of you needing to make this dietary change for the rest of your life, or maybe you don't have to make the dietary change for the rest of your life, right? Okay, so again, let me review. There's really only two root causes of Hashimoto's, right? If you really think about it, there's genetics and then there's what we call non-genetic or acquired. Genetic means you've got the genes in your family for autoimmune disease uh, or Hashimoto's outright, and that means you probably do too if you have been diagnosed Hashimoto's or even hypothyroid. And then over here we have acquired, which means there's really no genes or autoimmune stuff going on in my family, but you had an infection somewhere along the way that triggered cross reaction. Now, now the other thing that can uh, kick off this acquired thing are foods, right? Now I talked about infections, but there are foods that can cross react as well. And I've made some videos on like, you know, the worst foods for Hashimoto's and they're the worst foods because they can cross react. Meaning if your immune system develops an antibody for that food, it can't tell the difference between that food and your thyroid gland. So some people develop food, real, honest to goodness, immune system reactions to foods, and then that is what kicks off their Hashimoto's, right? So those people are in the acquired camp as well. So anyway, I hope you guys found that helpful. There's lots of other videos I've made to kind of expand on this topic. Just remember, there's only two root causes, really. It's important you know which one you got.